My name is Roy Upton. I founded the American Herbal Pharmacopeia in 1995, and um, the primary goal was to help establish uh, standards of quality and testing for herbal products generally, not cannabis specific, but herbal products generally. And um, at that time, nobody was really working on developing standards, and it's kind of like the Wild West, much like cannabis is now. Um, where there's everybody's doing things differently and there's very little standardization and and while there may be you know pockets of people that really are boutique quality manufacturers just like in the herb world um, the larger industry because it's non-standardized and there's not a lot of knowledge on how to make a real quality product we, we wanted to do this for, for herbal products so we developed the American Herbal Pharmacopeia and we developed our monograph system that basically takes the herb all the way you know, from the field to how it should be grown, when it should be picked, how it should be dried in order to preserve its optimal quality for making a medicine, specifically for medicinal purposes in this case. And, um, and then we also do therapeutic and safety reviews as part of most of our monographs as well. Yeah, our monograph is basically a dossier on, a, on whatever you're monographing, in this case cannabis or a botanical. And what a monograph does, it establishes standards of uh, identity, purity, quality, safety, and testing. We include things like the botanical identification. How do you identify this plant so that you know you have the right stuff? And then what does the material that you're actually gonna use as a medicine look like, feel like, and taste like? Have, uh, what does it look like under a microscope? And then uh, we include all chemistry. So in this case, HPTLC, high performance thin layer chromatography, which is a chemical fingerprinting technique, uh, high performance liquid chromatography, which is also an identifying technique, but also can quantify, for example, in this case, cannabinoids. We also have uh, GCMS, gas chromatography, because that's one of the methods that's predominantly used by uh, the feds for quantifying uh, cannabinoids. And then we also have recommendations on microbial limits, pesticides, heavy metals, solvent residues, uh, organic filth, uh, foreign organic matter, um, just every type of metric that goes to what do we need to do to produce a quality herbal medicine. We've seen most states that are regulating cannabis, and in some case counties, um, adopt uh, aspects of the monograph either in full or in part, mostly in part. Uh, so that's the good news, is that we, we have made a lot of inroads in those states that regulate cannabis in recognizing the authoritativeness of the HP monograph. And um, so that's good in that uh, the cannabis monograph was developed in conjunction with numerous stakeholders within the cannabis industry. So it's the cannabis industry saying this is what we should actually be doing at least at the time of the publishing of the monograph. Everything needs to be revised over time, and we, we're talking about that uh, right now. Um, but the fact that it's now recognized as one of the most authoritative documents on the regulation or the standards uh, setting um, perspectives of cannabis, this is a really good thing because then it is the cannabis industry that's doing this, and independent experts, so for example, like from the University of Mississippi. Um, so that's the good part. The bad part is that um, numerous people are misinterpreting how the monograph should be applied. And especially, you know, to our discussion today is regarding microbial limits. Um, microbial limits in conventional herbal products were never meant to be pass or fail criteria. They were meant to be quality assessment criteria for in-process controls, for growing controls, for storage controls, for handling, extracting, processing, whatever it be, so that you knew that um, you weren't introducing any potential pathogenic microbe into your quality control process or your manufacturing process. Maybe you have five years of baseline that was based on drought, like here in Santa Cruz limits, but now you have a really rainy winter and now you're all of a sudden your yeast and molds are super high or your microbes are super high, but it's only because of increased water activity. It doesn't mean that the plant is inherently bad or there's anything wrong or it's contaminated or that it's gonna be pathogenic. And that's the most important thing. Differentiate between what's pathogenic and non-pathogenic. It's a ridiculous notion to believe that, that any natural product should be free of microbes. It just doesn't exist. 
It doesn't exist in the human organism. And I think that the human microbiome and the bacterial microbiome is so integral to our immune system and our health, we need it. And we also, most of us, probably aware that that our seeking sterility with the antibacterial soaps is killing our microbiome in the environment, which makes us more susceptible to superbugs because we're, we're breeding superbugs rather than building a resistance to the weaker bugs. So eventually we're gonna collapse because of that. So to think that cannabis or any other herbal product should be sterile is just beyond ridiculousness. Um, but what is what we do have to do, we have to differentiate between what's potentially pathogenic and what's just a normal part of the, 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 the flora, the microbiome of the cannabis environment and the human environment.